In this video, we will solve the problem 132 from chapter 2 from a textbook from mechanical vibration from Rao. In the figure, we see a railroad car of mass 2,000 kilograms traveling at a velocity of 10 meters over second, and is stopped at the end of the track by a spring damp system. The stiffness of those two springs are 80 newtons over millimeters, and the damping constant is 20 newton seconds over millimeters. They like us to determine the maximum displacement of the car after engaging the spring and the damper and the time taken to reach that maximum displacement. First, let's say what we have in as a data, which are the data given. We have the mass of the car, which is 2,000 kilograms, the constant of the spring, I will convert millimeters into meters, so this is 80,000 newtons over meter, and the constant of the damper is 20,000 newtons seconds over meter. When the rail road touches this damper and spring system, that's when we will start counting our x. Therefore, we can say that the initial conditions are initial position is equals to zero meters and the velocity is equals to 10 meters over second. Now we have to understand the type of system that this involves. So let's understand the system. So we have the constant of the spring, the mass, and the constant of the damper. Therefore, we are able to calculate the natural frequency, which is defined as the constant of the spring divided by the mass. In this case, will be 80,000 divided by 2,000. That gives me a natural frequency of 6.32 radians over second. Now we can also calculate the damping ratio which is defined as the constant of the damper divided by 2 km. That will be then 20,000 divided by 2, 80,000 multiplied by 2,000. The damping ratio is equal to 0 0.79. Since the distance and the damp, we know that the system will oscillate with the damper frequency. Let's calculate our damper frequency as well. Omega V is omega N square root of one minus zeta squared. That will be then equals to 6.32, one minus 0 0.7906 squared. We have that our damper frequency is equals to 3.87 radians over second. Here we have a formula sheet for free vibration response. This is the natural frequency, the damping frequency, and the damping ratio that we already calculated. We discovered that our system was under damp. Therefore, we can use this expression right here. Remember that we can express our solution or response in terms of two harmonic functions, cosine and sine, or a combined cosine function could be cosine or could be sine. If we use the cosine, the phase angle is defined as the inverse tangent of B over A, and we, if we use the sine function, the phase angle will be A over B. We covered that when we study under the system, and as you see, any summation of two harmonic forces can be expressed as a single cosine with a phase angle, with this is the, the phase angle, or a simple sine function, and this will be the phase angle. We come back to our problem, and there we know that since the system is under dam, the response is, in terms of a sine function, x, the amplitude e to the negative sine omega nt sine of omega dt plus a phase angle. And the phase angle, we say that is the inverse tangent 
of in that in the formula she is a over b x sub zero omega d divided by d sub zero plus x zeta omega n. The amplitude, and you can look at the formula sheet again, is the square root of a square b square, which means that is the initial position square plus velocity plus x square omega n zeta divided by omega d square. In this case, we have the initial position is equal to zero, so this is equal to zero, and that becomes then the velocity over omega d. If you input those values, that will be 10 divided by 387. That gives me a value for the amplitude of 258 meters. And the phase angle is equal to 0 degrees. If we graph the response, we see that there is a peak and then we go to an overshoot and we go to the equilibrium position. The system oscillates but it only goes once below the equilibrium position because the damping coefficient is very high. Now let's go to the second question. They like us to find the maximum displacement of the car after engaging the spring and the damper and the time taken to reach that maximum. We could do that Graphically, so they are asking you know, about this point. So I went ahead and calculated it graphically. And it says that at 0 0.17 seconds, the amplitude is 0 0.675 meters. So that will be the maximum displaced and the time taken to that displacement. But let's do it also mathematically. The maximum displacement occurs when the velocity is equal to zero. So we have to derive that expression that we have and make it equal to zero. The derivative will be the amplitude. The derivative of the first term will be, will be equal to negative zeta omega n e to the zeta omega n t sine of omega d t plus phi plus the derivative of the second term. The amplitude multiply both terms, so that will be e to the negative zeta omega n t. The derivative of sine is cosine and in the internal the derivative is omega d. So this is the expression for the velocity. We will make this equals to zero. If this is a product, this cannot be zero. Therefore, this term has to be equals to zero. So I will put the other one term in one side of the equation and the other term in the other side of the equation. And I get zeta omega n e to the zeta omega n t sine of omega dt plus phi equals to e of omega n t omega d cosine of omega d t plus phi. This term cancels out and we can write that the tangent of omega d t plus phi will be equals to omega d divided by zeta omega n. We know that the phase angle is equal to zero, so let's find the inverse tangent, and also we can say that this is omega n square root of one minus zeta square over zeta omega n, omega n cancels out, so we can get that omega dt is the inverse tangent of square root of one minus zeta square divided by zeta. This number, if we input the value that we got for zeta, is equals to zero, 7906 square 
divided by the same number and we get that the omega d which is also known and we calculate the inverse tangent that gives me 0 0.6590 then we can calculate the time time will be 0 0.690 divided by omega d and omega d is 3.87 so therefore the time where the maximum occurs is 0 0.17 seconds as expected because we calculated it. Now we can input this time in our response. Of course, we have to input all the values. We already know that the phase angles is equal to zero. We know that the amplitude is equal to 258. This is E. 0 0.7906, the omega n is 6.32, the time is 0 0.17. Please be careful with rounding errors, carry all your decimals, and we get that the response is equal to 0 0.075 meters, as expected because we calculated it graphically. And this represents the solution of this problem.